Hello everyone, um, so in this video I'm going to walk you through how to do Lab 4 for the online Astro 113 course. Um, to get to Lab 4 you're going to want to go to your Blackboard page, go to Course Content, go to Week 2, and click Lab 4, our spinning orbiting orb. Um, We'll note that this lab uses the free Stellarium software. You can download it from stellarium.org. The link is right here. Let's visit that real quickly. Um, and then you can download the appropriate version of the software from here and install it. Uh, hopefully you should have done that for lab 3 already, but if you haven't, then you can do so now. Um, so let's take a look at the lab. So this lab is going to be focusing on the rotational motion of the Earth and um, the orbit of Earth around the Sun and how that appears to us in the sky when we look at the stars. So um, we're going to start out this lab by setting our location to Phoenix in the United States. To do that, I'm going to open up Stellarium and I'm going to mouse over this left section of the window right here and this top button here is the location window we're going to select that and we can type Phoenix into the search bar and select Phoenix United States and that should shift our um, our location within this um, within this simulation effectively to be at Phoenix. Secondly, we're going to set the current time to March 15th, 2018 um, at 6.36 p.m. We can do that by going to the date time window here, entering uh, March 15th. March is the third month actually. March 15th. And we can set this to 1836. Zero, zero. And then if we come down here and press this play button, we can pause the simulation at this time. Um, this time for the duration of this lab this time is going to be known as sunset so if you're asked a question about what is happening at sunset then you should go to 1836 and it's also important to note that because of how the uh, well you'll investigate how um, you'll investigate how the celestial plane changes when you um, as the seasons change effectively. So it's important that you set the date correctly as well. Um, we can close this window. So at this point we're staring at a very boring empty sky. Can't really see anything. Um, so we're going to change a few options. Notably uh, we can press the C key to turn on constellations, the V key to actually name them, and we can turn on constellation boundaries using the B key. So in addition to this, we can go to the sky and viewing options window, which is right here, and we can change this uh, slider bar to choose how sensitive our, um, basically, which stars get marked uh, when we're viewing the sky. Um, to actually see stars though, we'll have to turn off the atmosphere. You can do this with this button down here, or you can press A. Um, so now we can actually see stars. We can see the constellations. Um, I've turned on the equatorial coordinate system right here. You can see these lines. You can turn that off and on with E. Um, leaving it on might aid in, uh, might help you understand the lab better. 
so I would recommend leaving them on. Uh, you can also turn off the ground by pressing G and this allows you to see th stars which exist below the horizon, which you may need to do at some point. Um, but we'll keep the ground on for now just to have some sense of where we're looking at. Um, okay, so the first task you're asked to do is to look west and see what direction the stars and constellations set in. So to look west, we're going to press Shift W, and this will point us due west. Alternatively, we can left click and drag to move our view around. But let's go back to west for the time being. So the question asks, in which direction do the stars and constellations set? In order to figure that out, you're going to want to speed up time. You can do that using this button right here increase time speed, or you can press L. Uh, that was a few presses of L, and now we see, whoops, it's quite fast, but we see that the stars are moving in this constant path as we um, view westward. So, of course, you should do that for yourself, and then you should go ahead and answer the question. And likewise, when we face east, we see a different thing happen, and you should answer that question as well. Um, same for south, and then same for north. So you can see that depending on which direction you're facing, the motion of the stars looks very different. Um, both, yeah, well, very qualitatively different. In this case we see the spiral. From the south we see something quite different. Um, your next question asks you about the North Star. And the North Star in this case is referring to Polaris. That's right here. And Polaris is basically the star which is closest to the center of this coordinate system. This is if you were to stand at the North Pole and look directly upwards, Polaris is what you'd see. And you see that over time, Polaris barely moves. Um, so we can click on Polaris and you can see all sorts of information about it. Um, and I believe some the question asks uh, what kind of star Polaris is. So you should answer that question based on the information here. Um, it also asks uh, how far Polaris is from the Sun. So, again, this information is in this long list. Um, so, you can look at, for instance, you know, you have your azimuth and altitude, that's its position in the sky, but you also have its distance, which is how far it is from us. Um, and it also asks uh, how far <coughs> how far Polaris is from the North Celestial Pole. What is the angular separation? Um, and to determine this, well, you can go ahead and pause the simulation by pressing K, or you can press this button to slow things down to a reasonable rate. We're asked what the angular separation between the North Star and the North Celestial Pole is. Um, we can zoom in in this case. So basically the question we're being asked is, what is the angular distance here? To do that, you'll probably need to know that the North Celestial Pole is at a declination of 90 degrees, which is to say, from the North Pole, the North Celestial Pole is, of course, straight up in the sky. Um, and if you look here, uh, you can see the declination of Polaris at 89 degrees in 20 minutes. Um, so basically what you have to figure out is what is the difference between the declination of Polaris and 
the 90 degree line, and that should be your answer. <coughs> Next, um, Your next task is going to be investigating how motion appears differently when viewed from different locations. So we already saw that when we face west, the stars move in this direction. Um, but this is from Phoenix, so we might ask, well, does this look different when it's viewed from a different location? So what you're asked to do is to look at the same thing from a number of different latitudes. Um, and those latitudes will be the equator. And the equator has a latitude of 0 degrees. So as you can see, our little marker is now on the equator. And if we look at the motion of the stars, we can see that it looks different from how it did in Phoenix. And if we were to, say, go to the North Pole, the North Pole is 90 degrees north, then the motion again looks different. Although, of course, from the North Pole we can only face south, because every direction is south from the North Pole. Finally, I believe you're asked to view the stellar motion from the latitude south 45 degrees. So we'll go there. This is here on the map. And we'll face west again. And again, we can see that the direction is going to be different. Um, so the takeaway here is that depending on where you are on the Earth, the motion of the stars looks different, and that's because you are effectively um, standing at a different relative angle to the motion of the Earth. You're up, the direction of your up changes as you move over the surface of the Earth. So the final thing you'll be asked to do in Stellarium is calculate rising and setting angles. Um, so let's try and quickly go over what that means. So the first spot you're asked to do this in is Phoenix. So let's go back to Phoenix, which is at um, a latitude of 33 degrees north, which is right here. Um, and we're going to look west. And the question we want to ask is, what is this angle that the stars are setting at? Or equivalently, what is this angle that the stars are rising at? And these two angles should be the same angle in general. Um, so to calculate this, you don't need to do it precisely. Um, the lab mentions that you can press Control A to use an angular separation tool, but I can't get that working. So maybe they took that out in a recent version or put that functionality somewhere else. I'm not sure. But thankfully, you don't have to be very accurate. Um, ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're trying to measure the angle between this motion of the rising stars and the horizon. So the angle that you're looking for here is this angle right here. Um, between this line and this um, 
this equatorial latitude line that the stars are following. Um, and of course, again, you'll be asked to do that from multiple different locations. If we change the uh, latitude to um, 90 degrees, we see that angle is different. So you're actually measuring the angle between basically two parallel lines because the movement in this case is actually parallel to the horizon. Um, and you also do that from the equator, which is 90 degrees. So what is this angle between the motion of the stars and the horizon at the equator? Um, and finally, you're asked to think about, you know, what pattern do you see here? Um, in general, what does the rising angle and the uh, and the latitude of the location you're viewing from add up to? And why is that? What is the reason that um, those always add up to the same thing? Um, the final part of your lab will be on seasonal stars, basically investigating the, um, the zodiac and other similar effects. So here we have this diagram. Um, as we can see at one time of year, if we look in this direction at midnight, we'll see Taurus here. But if we were to do the same at another time of the year, say three months later, we'll see a different zodiac. So. Um, a different zodiac constellation, that is. Um, so you're asked to answer these questions as well. And um, finally, you're asked about side reel days. Um, so for us, a solar day means that um, a solar day is the amount of time it takes for the Earth to go around a full revolution until we're staring back at the sun in the same place. But this is complicated because as Earth is rotating, it's also orbiting around the sun. Um, and these interact with each other because, in effect, the, um, the line which points from the Earth to the sun is changed. So we'll actually see that uh, a solar day, in a solar day, the Earth ends up rotating more than 360 degrees um, to be able to stare at the sun in the same place that it was the day before. Whereas a sidereal day is the amount of time that the Earth takes to go around exactly 360 degrees. So you'll have to work through some problems regarding that as well. And as usual, when you're done with the lab, you can just press the Save and Submit button. Um, of course, I haven't answered the questions here because it's up to you to do that. But um, So I hope that this walkthrough has been helpful, and good luck.